What does it even mean to be a Christian, though? Complicated question, especially these days. Well, at least the answer will be complicated. But then the truth is, we're the ones that make it complicated. I mean, we've gone from just operating based on the word of, of God, of Christ, and the disciples, and now we've got about 66,000 denominations, and we haven't even started talking about Catholicism yet. You know, it's a lot of opinions in there. You know, but if I had to answer the question, I mean, what does it mean to be a Christian? I'd probably have to talk about the word Christian itself. Or even go back to Acts 11.26, where it says that the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. You know, of course, you'd have to talk about Jesus, too, because Christians are named after Jesus Christ. I mean, Jesus, you know, Jesus, the, the Greek word, you no, know, not his, his Hebrew name. His Hebrew name is Yeshua, you know, Yeshua, basically meaning the one through whom salvation comes. The one whom Yahweh will bring salvation. And then Christ is it's a Greek word too, but it's the best word they could find to describe their word for Messiah, Mishiach, the anointed one. So Jesus Christ basically means, you know, the anointed one through whom God will bring salvation. The one through whom Yahweh brings salvation, Jesus Christ. The word Christian though is also a combination of, of two words, Christos, just like Jesus Christ, and then the word anos, Christi anos. Christian. Anos, some commentators would just tell you that it's, you know, transliterated into Latin, I-A-N, you know, the ending that we throw on to, you know, just basically means related to, you know, that which is related to. So the word Christian at face value simply means that which is related to Christ, whatever comes from Christ. But that definition is, I mean, that's not good enough for me, you know. So I, I looked into it and I decided I was going to do a little bit more research on anos and I, I found out that the word anos is, is only mentioned in the Bible when it's hooked up with the word Christos. So that's the only time it appears is with the word Christian. But it's found in extra biblical literature like Homer and them guys, you know, and it, it, it means fool or silly, anos. So the whole meaning of Christian just changed just with that definition. So. In, in Antioch, what it really meant was those fools who were following after the person they thought to be Christ. It wasn't even a positive name. It was like they were making fun of them. But Antioch was big on politics, so it's something they did all the time. If they were around today, they'd probably call most of us Obam Obamanos, you know? Those fools who follow after Obama, you know? So, you know, I, I, I can understand the name was it, it was, it was really making fun of the Christians. And today, I mean, not much has changed. We're still pretty much the laughing stock of the world. I mean, we've gone from preaching the word of God and prophesying to selling prayer cloths and preaching prosperity. And then those on the other, on the whole other extreme are preaching messages of exclusivity and sectarianism. You know, I'm the one, we're the ones with the truth, you know? So I can understand the world making fun of us, but all hope is not lost because the word Christian actually has a lot more meaning to it. Is what, what the word anos literally means is to operate as if having no mind of your own, like not even any brain, you know, like your head is just empty, anos. So literally like a fool. And so even though the uh, Antiochians meant it for degradation and a negative connotation, the word Christian carries in it what it takes to actually be a follower of Christ having absolutely no mind of your own following after Christ. So I can imagine why Paul would say, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who thought it, you know, nothing to make himself of no reputation, but made himself like a human and, and suffered the death of the cross. Huh. Or even why he says that we should, shouldn't be conformed to the things of this world, but transformed by the renewing of our minds daily. Could you imagine if Christians really had the mind of Christ? I mean, have we lost our minds? <laughs>